What does it mean when this beautiful Tulum beach has tons of seaweed on it? You guys watched my videos and you asked me on Instagram and I'm answering your top question right now, which is, Is the seaweed bad right now? Is it still worth going? When and why does this happen? Coming up. Oh, that clip makes me so excited for my return trip to Tulum. And if you're new here, hola! I'm Christine with Where in the World is Seattle and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out, and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. This week, I'm bringing in my girl. This is Hot Flashes and Boarding Passes recording for Christine. And that video was shot on June 23rd, 2021. And it's helpful to see what it looks like now, but I know what you care about, which is when you specifically are there, how are you gonna know if it's bad? So let's start with some helpful resources. The first resource is right here on Facebook at Red Sargasso, which is a non-government organization that gives you updated information on the seaweed situation in the entire Cancun and Mexican Riviera area, which includes Tulum. And so it's a great place to go to to find up-to-date info on what the current situation is like. The second tool I like to use is Reddit, and it's a really great way to talk talk to people on the ground and get up-to-date info, whether you're asking a question or you're listening to someone else. This person is asking, is it possible to swim in the ocean right now? And they posted this 18 days ago, which is the same time that my boy Ibis, who met me in Cancun, and I dropped tons of videos on that, by the way, he was in Tulum at this time and he wasn't able to swim in Tulum at all. It wasn't until he and I were on a whole bosh island together that he finally got to go into the ocean. But Reddit is another great way to stay up-to-date on what's going on right now and ask the community a question. Ooh, speaking of community, add in the comments below if you've ever experienced seaweed in Tulum or elsewhere. I was just in Miami the other weekend and the seaweed situation there is pretty thick right now as well. And if you're getting some value out of this video, cheers that like button and consider subscribing. All right, let's talk about my third resource, which is simply heading over to Instagram and looking at specific locations and the current stories going on in that place. Think about all the places that you wanna be hanging out in in Tulum and just go watch the current stories of what people are posting at that spot. Let's talk about when this happens because 2021, according to this news article, link in the description below, 2021 might be a lot of seaweed like record levels this year. The thing to know is that it tends to happen during the hottest months. It's hot all the time in Tulum, but the hottest months are May through October, and that's when they tend to see the most amount of seaweed. So let's cut to Stacy and see what it looks like now. She asked me about the seaweed situation. She has tons of questions, and I was just heading down to the beach, and this is like ground zero. Look at all the work. So what does it mean when there's a lot of seaweed? So when I was there in November and December, this is what the beaches looked like when I was there. And it was really, really beautiful. When there's seaweed, it means that obviously it looks different. You saw it from the videos, but it also means it's difficult to swim out into the ocean. And it also means it kind of smells because when the seaweed washes ashore, it rots and it doesn't smell amazing. And I know what you're gonna ask, is it still worth going? The answer is a hands down yes. And it's because Tulum is such an amazing destination that provides so much more than just the beach. Here's an example. Earlier this year, I was in Zanzibar, tons of videos of that on my channel. And when I was in Zanzibar, I was at the beach, I was in the ocean, I was 100% of my time was spent at the beach. And if there was a seaweed situation there, it would have completely changed the situation. But in Tulum, there is so much to do. Whether you're going to the cenotes, and so many of the cenotes are covered in caves. And so even if it's raining outside and there's seaweed, you can still enjoy the cenotes. Or you can go to Sian Khan, where you have the amazing lazy river. That's not the beach at all. You're somewhere completely different. Or go explore all of the ruins or... Now I'm just gonna repeat my entire YouTube playlist of Tulum videos. There's so much to do in Tulum, so you should go. Plus you can still have a really great time drinking at the beach clubs even without going into the water. Or an alternative idea, go up to Playa del Carmen where you can spend time at really beautiful pools. I love staying at the Hilton Playa. Or like I just did a couple weeks ago, go to Cancun. You spend so much time indoors, go enjoy the nightlife. Or make sure you're just staying up to date on Red Sargasso and seeing where the seaweed is the worst. And Ilo Mujeres is such a great option. Holbash Island, phenomenal. Videos on all of this on my channel, but go to Tulum. It's awesome. Really, really awesome. 
I hope you've gotten some value out of this video. Make sure you cheers that like button. And if you're if you're like me and you like to geek out about understanding where are the volumes of seaweed? Why did this happen in the first place? What's the history of it? And what's being done about it? I've linked some interesting articles below, in particular, one from the American Association of Advancement of Science. That's really quite interesting. Ooh, and as I'm planning my return to Loom trip, tell me in the comments if you have any suggestions on things I should do or what you're planning for your own trip. I'd love to know. I'm Christine. I'm here every week with new videos. I hope to see you in the next one. Ciao.